covering the Northern Bahamas? You're watching The Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. Welcome back. The Northern Region Public Service Celebration Committee, along with the Ministry of Public Service and National Insurance, preparing to launch the 18th Annual Public Service Week and recognition of retirees. This year's theme, the public service, igniting a positive change for future generations. Committee Chairperson Lori Bullard says activities will commence this Sunday, November 4th, with a church service at Jubilee Cathedral at 10 a.m. on Settlers Way. 33 long-serving public officers who have retired with 25 years or more between July 2016 and June 2018 will be recognized at an appreciation luncheon 12 noon on Friday, November 9th, 2018 at the Grand Lucayne Resort. This event will be held under the distinguished patronage of the Honorable Brenzel Rowe, Minister for the Ministry of the Public Service and National Insurance. Entertainment will be provided by our one and only widely acclaimed Grand Bahama Police Pop Band and the Northern Region Public Officers Choir. Now the honorees are from the Judiciary Department, the Registrar General, Road Traffic, the Royal Bahamas Police Force, the Post Office, Bahamas Customs, the Department of Immigration, and the Department of Education. All are invited to tune in to ZNS Radio every morning at 6 a.m. during the week of November 4th through 10th when morning devotion will be hosted by the various departments with honorees. Public officers, colleagues, associates, family and friends of our honorees, you are all invited to join in this week of celebrations as we ignite a positive change for future generations in this, our Commonwealth of the Bahamas. In other news, the Ministry of Youth, Sports and Culture's annual Youth March and Rally set to take place this coming Sunday. Chairman of the Parade, Dorlin Cartwright, says once again they are counting on the support of residents to make this year's event a success. I'm inviting all youth groups, all marching bands are on board. So we want to make certain that the hard work that our youth leaders are doing behind the scene is on display. Uh, with all our colors and dancing and marching and getting the excitement going. As we know, I, youths, young people, they like support. They like a fan base. Uh, they, they like social media. And so therefore, we are calling Grand Bahama to support our youths. They need the backing. They need to be assured. They need affirmation and they need to be encouraged. Uh, we have all of the major uh, marching bands in Grand Bahama on parade. All of our members of parliament will be with us and all our youth leaders will be there. So Grand Bahama, we need you. If you can't march, you could be encouraged you to join the sidelines and cheer us on as we pass the route. Now, he says many bands and youth groups have already committed to this year's march, which begins at 2 p.m. at the C.A. Smith Complex. This year, 2018, our theme was Youth at the Forefront of Change. And so what has been happening over the month our youths have been showcased, they have been put in the spotlight, they have been honored, and the leaders who work behind the scene has done an astronomical good job at getting this done. And our youths, as we know, are in the now. And so therefore, we must recognize their abilities and be able to coach, to train, to motivate, and to push them forward. Now, once again, the Youth March will begin at the C.A. Smith Complex and end at the Independence Park, and that is this Sunday beginning at 2 p.m. Well, Remembrance Day, also known as Puppy, Poppy Day, rather, is observed annually to honor the end of World War I, which occurred at 11 a.m. on the 11th day of the 11th month in 1918. But Remembrance Day is also a time to pay respect to fallen war veterans. The wearing of poppies is among the traditions used to observe 
Reserve Remembrance Day. Now, there are a number of Bahamian veterans that are still alive, including 90-year-old Mr. Henry Kelman, who is still vibrant, healthy, and very articulate. Very grateful and thankful to God for allowing me to live this long and to still be able to move about and I'm in my sound mind. Yes. yes. That's the important thing. Mm -hmm. And when we look around and see the things that have take, taken place mm -hmm. over the many years that I was here, you have to understand that God has been good to me. Now, District Education Officer Marvin Rolls says the Ministry of Education will commence poppy sales in the Grand Bahama, Bimini, and the Keys District to celebrate and to remember the brave Bahamian veterans who served in World War II. As a small token of our Great respect and admiration of these warriors. We wear the poppy, a symbol of rebirth amidst death. Not only reminded uh, of the work of these men in World War II, but every Bahamian who has at some point been involved in the armed services. Now Remembrance Day will be held on Sunday, November 11th, 2018. And the fourth annual Lobster Fest is officially in the history books. Residents and tourists gathering at Williams Town Beach for the cultural festival, which featured an array of seafood but highlighted the Bahamian delicacy, lobster. These guests from New Providence and the United States say they had a blast. We have about 40 or 50 people on here celebrating my wife's 78th birthday party. And uh, we totally enjoying ourselves. We are now in Williamstown. Uh, they say they have a lobster fest down here. We had the lobster, it's real good. We had Kong Fritters, we had lobster. Now we're waiting on Kong Salad. I'm enjoying lobster fest because right now I'm eating a lobster and it's real good. I'm enjoying it. I'm from Miami, Florida and I'm here to celebrate my sister's 70th birthday and I'm having a blast. The minced lobster and the Kong Salad. Great. Fantastic. The shrimp, we had um, Kong Salad, which is nice. We had, um, what the other food you all have here? Lobster. Very good. And this, I love this with the music. Trini, eh, represented Trinidad and Tobago. Oh, vendors were busy around the clock preparing for their unique dishes. Another Bahamian staple on the menu was gully wash. Rain Haig says that this is her family's first time participating in the Lobster Fest, and they love the idea of hosting the fest in the community. I met my sister and her husband. Um, this is our first time taking part in the Lobster Fest, but we've been, we had good business. We're selling the gully wash good. It's good to bring people out to the community, see what um, the Bahamas has to offer, bring tourists, and I think we have a really good thing going here. And on to some sad news this evening, attorney Aral Maynard. Aral Maynard and co. passed away this morning following a brief illness. Maynard was a noted and an esteemed attorney for the past 30 years. He was also a former magistrate here on Grand Bahama. He passed away at the age of 81 and is survived by his wife, family, friends, and the management and staff of Aral Maynard and co. And now it is time to ask the doctor. Welcome. 
Elaine from Freeport asked, what are the early signs of autism disorder in children? Thanks for your question, Elaine. Autism spectrum disorder covers a variety of symptoms, skills, and levels of impairment. Essentially, it is a serious neurodevelopmental disorder that impairs a child's ability to communicate and interact with others. It also includes restricted repetitive behaviors, interests, and activities. These issues cause significant impairment in social, occupational, and other areas of functioning. Some children show signs early in infancy. However, others might develop normally for the first few months or years of life, but then suddenly become withdrawn, aggressive, or lose language skills they've already acquired. Each child with autism is likely to have a unique pattern of behavior and level of severity, which can range from low to high functioning. So if you notice such changes in your child, please have them evaluated by a doctor. I'm Dr. Monique Pratt, and this has been Ask the Doctor. And Daylight Savings Time comes to an end this weekend, so be sure to set your clocks back before one hour before going to bed on Saturday night. The change officially comes at 2 a.m. on Sunday morning. So Sunday's change in time means that sunrise and sunset will be one hour earlier beginning November 4th. This means that there will be more daylight in the morning hours and one way to remember which way to set your clocks at the start and end of Daylight Savings Time is the familiar phrase, spring forward, fall back. Don't go away as Jack on Sports is up next with Romico Knowles. It's up early with great savings on all paint and supplies at Paint Fair, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Paint Fair, West Settlers Way, 352-9788.